Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel, Kalanadi. Today I am reviewing Babel 17 by Samuel R. Delaney. This is a classic science fiction novel originally published in 1966 and it won the Nebula Award for that year, though actually it tied for the award, but they both won. And bottom line, if you don't go any farther in this review, this is a classic sci-fi novel that I was really impressed by. The plot of this book is based on the Saper Whorf hypothesis, an idea that the structure of a language can influence or even dictate the way that its speakers think or behave. I was surprised to discover that this particular theory was a lot older than I thought it was. I first heard about it in a linguistics course almost 10 years ago, and for some reason I thought that it had been disproven. That does not appear to be the case. People don't think that it so drastically affects the way that people think, but it hasn't been disproven either. It's had its heyday, but it's not been abandoned. And this book, written in the 1960s when the hypothesis was kind of, I think, on its way out, really explores the extreme possibilities of that linguistic idea of language kind of controlling people. In this future, humanity has spread throughout the galaxy and they are currently engaged in a war with the invaders. There have been a series of attacks and infiltrations on the good guys' outposts, and during these they intercept radio chatter, which is in a code that they can't break. They turn to a woman named Rydra Wong. She is a poet with a background in cryptography and amazing linguistic skills, and they ask her to break this code for them. They call it Babel 17. Rydra discovers that this isn't actually a code, it's a full-blown language making it much more complex, and she also discovers that it seems to have an interesting effect on people's behavior or the way that they think when they learn how to speak it. And she goes off on a quest to discover where the language came from, what it can do, and ultimately try to stop the war and the attacks. I'll be honest, I set my expectations really low for this book. Not because I thought it was going to be bad, but because I've heard various things about Delaney's writing style, some of the weirder concepts he puts into books, and I just wasn't sure that it was going to be my kind of thing. I was expecting it to be like a super psychedelic, weird 60s trip, and it wasn't. And it has a 60s vibe, but it's not as far out as I expected it to be. And I think that a lot of my enjoyment of this book comes from the fact that it avoids some of the cliches of 60s and 70s classic sci-fi that are really beginning to annoy me these days. This is a book written in the 1960s by a gay African-American man which explores non-straight sexuality and has a female Asian protagonist. Rydra is described as being very beautiful, but she's also talented and intelligent. She has mental and physical strengths. She is not a cardboard cutout of a female character shoved into scenes to be pretty and to have sex with the male characters. She is a person. As a character, she stands on her own, and she is more highly valued by the other characters in this book for what's inside of her head rather than what's on her face. This is very refreshing. Thank you, Delaney, for proving that someone could do this back in the 60s. I'm going to have a really hard time giving any other classic SFF books a pass for lack of diversity when obviously Delaney has proved that it could have been done back then. He did it! Why didn't anybody else do it too? The other thing that I really enjoyed about this book is that it's based on a linguistic theory, whereas a lot of the SF that I read from this time period and modern is often really based around a hard scientific concept, often to the detriment of character development. But this is a book about language and about how language affects people. And you really can't have a linguistic theory or a language without the people that speak it. Now, there are some jarring elements of this book, mainly because it is old and it is one of Delaney's earlier novels. As far as the science goes, I think that Babel 17 is quite typical of a lot of books written before we went digital. A lot of the terminology and the technology is out of date. We've conquered the galaxy. 
but we're still using punch card machines to run our computers and tape recorders. I didn't find it that bad though. Sometimes I can be really pulled out of a science fiction book when it becomes obvious to me that the science is flawed or incredibly wrong, but I didn't get that sense during this book. It just it feels a bit old. The other thing is the writing style. The introduction to my SF Masterworks edition does discuss the exuberant language. This book has the feel of a young writer discovering the treasure trove that is the English language and just spewing vibrant words and experimental language across the page. But once again, it wasn't too much for me. It certainly felt like the work of a young writer, but even though I have a low tolerance for experimental language and poetry and so on, it still worked for me, and I actually found that it contributed to a certain atmosphere in this book. The upshot of my review is that I really enjoyed Babel 17. Despite my very low expectations, I really enjoyed reading this book. And if you are interested in reading classic science fiction, you could do a lot worse than to pick up this book. I definitely think it is one of the best classic sci-fi novels I have read so far. I haven't read that many, let's be honest here, but... I have been underwhelmed by quite a few, and this and Rendezvous with Rama by Arthur C. Clarke are really the only two classic sci-fi novels that I think I would reread at some point. And that's it for my review. I hope you found this helpful if you're interested in reading Babel 17 or another book by Samuel R. Delaney. I definitely am going to be picking up Dahlgren or Nova by him pretty soon. Thank you for watching, and until my next video, bye!